All right, how's everybody doing today? I know it's been a while, but I just wanted to update you on my next Strat build. I'm collecting the parts. Here's a photo of my body that I just, uh, it's almost done from MJT. They still have to check the finish, I mean crack the finish, and buff it to a gloss. But it's looking nice. But I went with the expensive Mark Foley bridge made in the UK. I know there's been a lot of talk about the Crazy Part bridge coming from Germany and the Mark Foley bridge coming from the UK. And I think they've even admitted that they come from the same place, but I wanted to get an idea, and I'm pretty sure they do. The last one we ordered for the last bill was Crazy Parts. One thing I noticed, and I, and I wanted to remove the plate, was that they don't remove the paint between the, the top of the block and the bottom of the plate. I don't like that paint to be there. I just want it nice steel to steel, but for now, I'm gonna leave it, put it on the guitar, and then maybe later remove it and just see if I notice a difference. Either way, it's a 270 gram block. Uh, sometimes the vintage blocks have bevels, but sometimes they don't. On the spring holes, this, these don't. At first I thought that wasn't vintage correct, but they were kind of all over the place. If you want a good source of vintage strap photos just go on eddie vegas's uh, website and he's got tons of pictures of all kinds of pots and tremolos and bodies and everything i like the whammy bar it's uh, nice and solid seems pretty vintage uh, i'm comparing everything usually to my 1964 strap which was all original I've got a chart here for the spring tensions, which I will put in the description. And what these are are measurements that I've come up with using a fish scale, and I've done quite a few videos on spring tension. But you can see that I, I stretch the spring for an inch, and I compensate for the different lengths in the spring, because I'll go into that. All right, I went back and organized this a little bit better. So you can see from the highest tension to the lowest tension, the top being Callaham, then Goto at 15 pounds, then Fender, Fender Vintage, which I have the set right here and I verified they, they're measuring right at 14.2 again. Uh, that Candy Apple Red Strat I'll show you in a second here. It had I think three vintage springs, which were around 13.5, 14.2, but then it had a couple of Callahams probably. I, and yeah, I got them mixed up there for a while, so I've straightened it out and put all raw vintage on there. Then you see uh, Mark Foley's, which are kind of all over the place, but they average out at about 11.8 pounds. And then you got uh, that, which I would assume was, the crazy parts comes out to about, let's say 11 pounds. And then the raw vintage are the least tension out of the bunch. And I just put that note on the bottom. If you have a drawer full of springs and stuff and you want to match them, this is a good way of doing it. Also, the coils and the links are kind of all over the place. You'll see that in the description. But my vintage 1964, which the reason it's highlighted is because that's my benchmark that I go by. I know they're original springs. For some reason, the 64 springs had 42 loops. And then all the other ones had 39 to 40 loops. And I, did, I don't think I remember counting the Fender American Vintage which are right here. But I just double checked them to make sure they were reading 4.2 and they were way shorter, almost about a, a quarter of an inch shorter. So I, I don't know how many loops they have, but I'll put it in the description. Now let's get a close up look at this nice bridge. And the thing that, you know, I was thinking about the extra cost. Like I said, the Goto might be around 100. You can probably get them for cheaper than that. And then these UK and German parts are 100 to $150 more. Now, I trust the accuracy. I 
I just like the, the quality of the product, but I think as some of it is just because of the exchange rates and the labor rates in the UK and Germany are just higher, and, and the Gotos are probably made in either South Korea or Japan or China, and they, uh, you know, they can just lower their labor costs. It's got fairly shallow holes. That's what the 50s had. Whammy bar, I got my whammy springs over here. Uh, I didn't really think these worked, but then I realized they're almost an absolute necessity if you do them right. You definitely don't want to over compress them, but they, if you don't do them, put them in there, your bar just does this all the time. Just flops around, so you definitely need those springs in there. And let's see, what else? Uh, the one thing I didn't like is that uh, Mark Foley didn't come with these two uh, spring claw screws. So luckily I had two from a Callahan that I had left over. It's got the six uh, hardened mounting screws. The rest of my parts, I've got the string tree here. I had an old vintage neck plate that I'm going to use, so it just save me a couple of bucks. Got a serial number on it. Now the pots are VIP, and I've used them quite a bit. They're made by Borns, B-O-U-R-N-S, and not C-T-S. And I like them a lot because almost all vintage pots drifted higher. In my 1964, it reads 326 K ohms. Here's a photo of that. And these are uh, one 288K, one and two 284Ks. And you can pay extra to have them match, but it's like a $15 upcharge. And I did that just so I could make sure I had all high reading pots because they have a, a plus or minus two. And if you get some that are below 280, I, I think the range is 10 to 15 percent, so they can still get down close to 250, so I paid to have a match. This is just their warning not to over tighten or to overheat the back of it when you're putting the, the ground wires on, which is critical to keep from damaging it. You have to have a like an 80 watt soldering gun's best and just do it really fast. And the backs of these are really good to solder on and just uh, you know, tin it a little bit, put a little uh, solder on there before you put your wires on there and it'll be fine. We'll move on to the rest of the parts and I'll show you kind of the look I'm going for, but the Music Craft neck, I hope will be here in a couple weeks along with the body, the MJT body. And I changed it up a little bit. I went with medium frets because of my arthritis to see if it makes it any easier. I still love the vintage small frets. And then I went with a, what they call a Fender Custom Shop 10 slash 56, that's the date, October 1956 V profile. And I hope I love it. I stuck with the roasted maple because I just, I've been real pleased with the way both of my roasted maple necks sound. So I didn't want to take any chances, but Here's my pick guard, pretty much just stuck with uh, genuine fender parts. Pick guard, just a single layer, because I'm trying to do m mainly a 57, 58, somewhere around there, but kind of a combination of 64, 57. And these are the Croatian Q pickups, and they're form bar wire, and it's the electro... I forgot, I, I want to say electrostatic, but they had the vintage wire and they supposedly, my buddy in Italy, Faris, the artist, check him out, Faris.com, F-A-R-E-E-S, turned me on to these and I have been waiting to try them for a few months because I'm going to put them in the new guitar. But I wanted to get this kind of this aged pickup cover look with the age knobs and the age tip because that's exactly what my 1966 Strat looks like except it has a three ply pick guard 
And let's go look at that real quick. So you have the pickup covers have yellow, the knobs have yellow. The actually, I don't think that's the original tip, but it's kind of yellow too. Uh, it is probably an original, but I do have the original. I mean, an aged white tip on mine. So you can see they all kind of match. So that, that's a legitimate look. Maybe not 50s, but uh, 60s. So that's it. I hope uh, you guys, I hope I can help a little bit. Some people ask, you know, what pot should I use? You know, RS Guitar Works has a 280K super pot, but you can only use it in the volume position, and supposedly it acts like a treble bleed, and a lot of people like those. But then you got to use regular 250K uh, pots in the uh, tone positions. I do have my backup raw vintage springs just in case I'm not thrilled with the uh, Mark Foley springs. I've had people tell me they love their crazy parts springs and the reason I didn't like the crazy parts bridge is because they only give you three springs and I thought what the you know you should at least give us five for the $250. That's another thing I wanted to point out was that all these that just have one measurement, the springs were consistent across all five springs. And then here I had that mixture. But the Foley's, you can see they're all different. Crazy parts are all different. But all the other ones are straight across. So I would you know, prefer to have matched springs. I can only think that they maybe make these springs in small batches and just mix them all up and they're not consistent with their tensions, which is kind of concerning. And I'm going back to the vintage saddles. I'm going to give them another shot because I have a really good tendency to cut grooves in these things. And the reason I like these right now is they're not plated. Like these are chrome plated and the Callahams are either chrome or nickel plated. I think the raw vintage are, are nickel plated. And they say that's vintage correct, and that's what I'm going to really hope that these are correct because on the vintage saddles, you don't seem to cut those grooves. And I, on the Callahams, it cuts through because there's a layer of copper, which is soft. What happens to me is I'll cut a groove, usually multiple grooves, but once that groove gets deep enough, then the guitar gets, the, the string gets a, a sitar effect, I call it, where it kind of doesn't ring true. So you have to buff that, that uh, groove out. And I hate that because after a while I start wearing the saddles out. That's why I took off my 1964 saddles. So there was actually becoming a dip where I was buffing it out all the time. But you may have heard that sitar effect before. I, I can't stand it. And it's just the string vibrating in that groove and kind of hitting the edges of the groove. So that's why I love the Highwoods, which I have as backup. And this is the first time I've tried chrome just because I read that chrome was harder. So I'm hoping that I don't cut a groove in these as easily. Actually, I did develop the sitar effect on my plain E just the other day. I just barely touched it with some very fine emery paper and it went away. So I was happy about that. But I mean, it's been years I've been using those. Springs sometimes are a problem, these uh, springs here, because nowadays they just put all the same lengths. At least Foley gives you two short ones and that those would go on the G and the wound E because a lot of times these saddles have to go way back. And if you got a long spring on there, it won't allow the saddle to go far enough back. I guess that's it. I'll uh, talk to you guys soon. Hopefully in a two or three weeks, I'll have all the parts and we'll look at everything and start putting it together. Talk to you later. Yeah, I forgot. I wanted to demo how I do this little test. Just take a fish scale. I just drill a little hole in this piece of two by four. Clamp it to the table so it doesn't slide around. And then you just bend it up. I mean, stretch it out. This looks like it's a, the 12.3. See? That's it. So you can test all your springs. So I'm, I'm going to even use that like when the ones that I... Not that it's going to make a lot of difference, but... 
If you've got three tight ones and two that are not as tight, then I would put the three, you know, outside and middle and then the two in between those and just to keep it consistent, you know. And there might be a situation where some people, you know, the way they tilt the, sometimes they'll say, oh, tilt the spring claw in there, that helps a lot. Well, maybe just put different tension, put the hires on one side and the lowers on the other. That might do the same trick. And I also want to mention that I know some of you are probably going, well, if you've got those high tension springs, just run less, you know, run four or three. But I always want to go with five springs. I think it sounds better. You know, Hendrix used five, Stevie used five. Most everybody uses five. Anytime I see somebody with less springs, I figure they've probably got these high tension springs on there and they have to put them on there because you could easily break your whammy bar if you've got five Callahams on there. You could, you know, snap it in a heartbeat. That's the reason I'm such a stickler about the uh, lower tension springs, and, and they do sound different. I mean, uh, I can guarantee you that the Callahams, it may not be all the springs' fault, but that bridge and those saddles are super hardened. He went way overboard when he went to harden, hardening his saddles, and he did it so nobody would cut grooves in it, which didn't solve that problem at all. You'll hear a lot of people say they're very bright. If you like a very bright sound, then go with the Callahams. I'm always shooting for a vintage Strat sound. And so anything I can get close to the, to the benchmark of 11.6 or maybe 11.2 might be good. 10.4, you know, some people think you know, it's might not be enough tension, but I love it when it comes to the whammy bar and it's very stable.